Arfield. What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's a Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Browno. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Phil Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley. Can he go on the outside? Comes inside. Comes up a shot. Oh, what a goal. Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserve the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody, welcome along to the latest episode here on Turfcast with me, Joe Redmond, ahead of this weekend's game against Cardiff City. Obviously, we're all still buzzing from a massive win away, admittedly a depleted Luton, but still a big statement win nonetheless. However, Cardiff will provide a completely different test and that's what the Championship's all about. And as always, on the pre-game show, I'm joined by a fan of the opposition and I'm joined by Thomas Taylor, who of course is a Cardiff fan, as you can see from that beautiful retro shirt. How are you doing, mate? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Obviously, Tom's been on the show before, the last time we were in the Championship. Hopefully, he didn't get any PTSD from Burnley just starting the championship campaign so well and we're obviously we're hoping we can do similar to what we did last time uh, and just pretty much win it at a canter i think it will be a little bit more difficult this year if we're being honest despite the big win um but as you could tell every single piece of commentary as as liam visa pointed out on last night's full-time show every single piece of commentary on that is from the last time we're in the championship nothing from last season has made it on as you can probably understand with how bad we were last season um but yeah let's get into cardiff then opening day defeat at home to sunderland i've seen a few people saying that cardiff will do quite well and they've recruited quite well and they're a little bit surprised that you lost against sunderland so easily on the opening day of the season you did bounce back last night in the carabao cup admittedly against bristol rovers who i think are in league one at the minute um, but it's kind of like a, a local sort of like rivalry, that one, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure how much hatred there is between the two, but I know you're quite close geographically. Um, so a bit of a mixed bag. What are your thoughts on Cardiff's start to the season, mate? Yeah, it's a bit that exactly, really. A bit of a mixed bag. Um, obviously, to lose to Sunderland is really disappointing. Um, but really, if you look at our home record against them in recent years, we'd, we yeah. never really play that well against them. Um, but despite the fact we lost 2-0, I don't think we actually played that bad to be honest um for big portions of the game i think we played really well um certainly a better type of performance than we would have seen any time last season um like if it was a you know we lost 2-0 to them on i think it was easter friday um last season and all right again it was another 2-0 loss today but just the differences in performance was like chalk and cheese to be honest um and hopefully that can carry on because you know they, they will be teams that we can be if we play like play like we did it's just we were nowhere near kind of lethal enough up, enough up front so we didn't really take our chances and ultimately it cost us in the end um but you know to respond to uh that with a two and a win over rovers um it you know they're only league one but you can only uh beat whoever's in front of you and we're yeah, going sure. into a tough run of games so i think just to maybe get that little bit of confidence flowing in the squad um you know, it, it's an important win and, um, yeah, hopefully it can kind of spur us on a little bit going into a pretty tough few weeks. Yeah, obviously, wins breed confidence no matter who they're against. So you'll be hoping, obviously, that the win against Bristol Rovers. Didn't like you calling them Rovers, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it confused me. I was like, eh? oh, hold on, yeah. Um, but yeah, Bristol Rovers. Um, but uh, yeah, you said there you, you played quite well against them. What went wrong then to lose 2-0? No, because obviously I didn't 
watch the game. I didn't see any highlights. I saw that. Saw 2-0 to the away side. I thought, comfortable that for Sunderland. What went wrong? You mentioned chances. Were you just not clinical enough up front? Yeah, as part of that, we weren't clinical. And the first goal, we kind of just switched off a bit defensively. Um, Perry NG was caught um, ball watching a little bit, uh, which was quite disappointing mm. to see because he's one of our better players. Um probably one of the best players in the squad and he still is but he was just you know quite quite unlike him um and he was just caught in no man's land a little bit um and you know Sunderland just basically capitalized on our weaknesses they did exactly what he needed to do and they weathered storms and managed to get a you know a, a decent result for them um like I said even though they always do quite well at kind of city stadium um it was annoying it was one of those ones where we had quite a lot of optimism going into it. I was quite confident. I thought we'd yeah. come away with maybe a two or three one win. Um and you know it's just kind of brings you down to earth a little bit yeah. again. Um yeah it, it was a couple of things really but again I think there's you know there was a lot from it to be kind of optimistic about um from the performance and you know quite some bits as well to be not so pleased about too. Yeah, you, you've already referenced last season and compared it to this season and said it's chalk and cheese, the performances. Where do you think Cardiff are at now this season compared to last season? What sort of aims are you hoping for for the season? Are, are you thinking you can potentially sneak into the, the top six? Is that what you've got to be looking for? I think so. Um, with the kind of recruitment that we've done over the summer, um, it's starting to feel a lot more like Errol Bullock's actual squad rather than a squad he kind of inherited and had to make as best he can under a transfer ban um so with some of the players that we bought in they they've either played at this level already or they're from the premier league or they've played at you know quite high levels across europe um and you know i think the feeling is now if we can the big thing is everyone stays fit um but if everything can click um i think kind of my rational thinking is saying you know, maybe t- uh, eighth or something like that would be yeah. a good finish. It'd be an improvement on last season. But another part of me does think, with, well, we've got the players, we've got the squad. Why can't we really challenge for the top six? I know championship's hard. Anyone from fifth to 15th can finish anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, with quite a few supporters and myself, I think the general feeling kind of is that we could be knocking on the doors of the playoffs. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I get what you, how you feel about that. I always do find it interesting that anyone really... I think the three that come down from the Prem are always going to be knocking on the door. Then you've always got a, two or three left over from the season before, like Leeds, for example, that are going to be knocking on the door, your Middlesbrough as well. Um, and then there's always your teams like yourselves who, who have been in the league for quite a while and want to potentially get out of it the right way. And every single one of them teams, I always feel like, starts the season. And they said, oh, maybe we can get the playoffs. So it is a bit of a battlefield in there. So I understand why you would think that you can do it. I even saw some like Blackburn and Preston fans at the start of the season saying it. And they were pretty poor last season, especially especially Blackburn. So it's interesting to see um, who will who will sort of like upset the apple cart sort of thing. I'm just looking at your um, incomings here. Um, obviously, you mentioned that you've recruited quite well. Um, obviously, you've got El Garza, Chambers, at Kanga as well, Robertson. Um, some decent recruitment there. Are, are you happy with the recruitment? Yeah, really pleased. Um, I think it's the type of player, the type of name that we should be looking out for and trying to, you know, kind of go out there and have the confidence to go and sign. Um, you know, we to get somebody like, you know, Al Ghazi, who's played at this level, all right, he's not played for quite some time now. Um, yeah. But I think if he can get back to uh, squad fitness and full fitness, to have him in the team, um will be really important to us and it could be kind of the you know the thing that tips the pendulum a bit of whether we can make a genuine push for the playoffs or not and especially mm-hmm. Callum Chambers as well I'm I'm really excited about that one um because you know all right he wasn't starting for Villa towards the end but you know you don't really make a career out of pretty much only ever playing in the Premier League by accident and you know yeah. he's played for some big name teams he's played for Arsenal Fulham um, Aston Villa, and you know he kind of just tidies up our back four a little bit, and you know he looks so far um, from what we've seen, he looks quite calm on the ball, and he's actively looking for passes to make so instead of just trying to clear the lines straight away. Um, you know we had Nat Phillips on loan uh, at the end of last season from January, and 
losing him was going to leave quite a big gap in the defence. Yeah. Um, and I think to get Chambers in is like pretty much the perfect replacement. Yeah, I agree with that. Chambers, that's good business. El Ghazi, like you said, if he can get to where he was at before, before not playing for a while, then then yeah, he can. He, he, they could be two decent un, under the radar sort of signings, I think, them. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how you go. Um, you mentioned him already, but manager Errol Balut, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about him. I know because I Wikipedia'd him before this, um, that he's a Turkish manager. But what sort of style and, uh, and system are we expecting from, from Cardiff, do you think? Uh, so last season, it there wasn't one, really. Um, okay. It was a bit messy at times. Um, and like when it was bad, it was just woeful. Um, it felt like watching Sunday League. But um, throughout pre-season, I think we kind of saw it a bit against Dunland as well. Um, it feels like he wants to sort of build that possession-based play out from the back kind of style okay. that we see yeah. a lot in English football nowadays. But yeah. I think he's kind of making the signings that can do that. So like you said about Chambers, he looks really quite calm and collected on the ball. And, you know, if he can sort of instill that calmness in the rest of our back four, um, then that would be great. He's actively looking for passes to make. Um, Chris Willock on Saturday, he, you know, he was actively beating his man and, you know, really handy um, on the wing, which is something we didn't really have much of last season. Um, we had, we chopped and changed wingers quite a bit throughout the year, but, you know, there, there wasn't really anyone that could sort of get us into that final third consistently. And so far it looks like that's what Willett can do. Um, so, yeah, kind of that, but keeping in mind that it is a way to Burnley um, and that, that might change come. <laughs> yeah, that, that was going to be my next question then. Like, yeah, that might be his system. Is he going to adapt, do you think? Like, what do you think? How do you think you're going to set up against against Burnley? Because I think we beat Luton so comfortably. All right, let's get our feet back on the, on the ground a little bit here. We beat them so comfortably because they had quite a few injuries. But we caught them cold, I think, I think as well. But they also, they left spacing behind. I don't know if you watched the match or you've seen the highlights, but our first two goals were carbon copies of each other. One was on the left-hand side, one was on the right-hand side. Luton were too far up the pitch, trying to press us when we had the ball at the back. One, not like a long ball, dash, Allardyce style sort of thing, like, but one ball around the defenders and we're in and we score. I don't think that Cardiff will be that silly. I think Cardiff will have looked at that and thought, we're going to sit back a little bit. Are we expecting you to just sit back and, and then try and hit us on the counter or, or maybe build out from the back as well? Because we, we we don't know too much yet about Scott Parker's style, obviously. But from what we saw against Luton, we are going to press from the front and we press quite well against Luton from the front. So if you are going to play out from the back, then that may or may not play into our hands. I'm not quite sure because I've only seen us play one game, obviously. But how are you expecting to play then and set up against Burnley at the turf, do you think? I think we probably will be a bit more defensive minded. Um, but to be honest, I'd really like to see us try and play from the back and not be afraid to kind of go forward and have a go. You know, like it's going to be a tough game. Like going to Burnley is always going to be hard. You know, you're one of the best, if not the best team in the league this year so far. Um, and it's going to be a monumental ask to get anything from Turf Moor, to be honest. But you know, I I quite like us, you know, just to be a bit brave, be a bit bold and just keep it going, you know, just try and even it's just to send a message to the rest of the league, like, you know, yeah, we're, we're here, this is how we're going to do things now. And, you know, again, I think we've got the players to do it now. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, an, it's one thing saying it and it, it's another actually doing it, especially against, you know, a team as good as yours. Yeah, but I, I respect that. To be fair, like if, I, if as a fan, if I if I'm going to watch my team lose, I'd rather watch, watch my team lose going for it than I would just sitting back and just waiting for the inevitable to happen, like we did a lot of times in the Premier League over the last few years. Uh, a couple of players at Cardiff that we haven't mentioned yet: uh, Ramsey. Um, he must be about forty-five now, uh, and you've got McGuinness as well. I think I think he's is he's still there, you know. He's been in Luton have been interested. I think he played last night. Well, I know, I know he did. I, I mentioned it off stream. Um, I'm just having a flashback now to that. But uh, he played last night. What's the deal with uh, with, with 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 Ramsey? Is he, he, like I said, he must be. Obviously, I'm joking. He's obviously not 45, but he must be getting on a bit. Can he play week in, week out at the minute? To be honest, probably not. Um, he started the first game and he's looked quite 
good throughout uh, preseason as well. Yeah. Um, and when you can get Rambo at his best, regardless of what age he is, um, it's never going to be a bad thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's a little bit injury prone. Um, he's not quite the player he once was. Um, but you know, I think he'll he will be involved. Um, one way or another quite a lot this season and even if you can just you know have a little bit of that influence over some of the youngsters as well i think kind of learn from him you know he's played for some of the biggest teams in the world you know he's been at arsenal has been at juventus yeah. um if you know he can sort of lay that off a bit and you know it's, it's just for leadership as well i think these players of that kind of caliber are just so important to have at this level and something's quite rare to have at this level and especially yeah. someone as good and has had the kind of career that Aaron has um so yeah I think he'll he'll, pro he'll be he'll feature quite a lot this season if he can stay fit um and yeah it's just it's just that if he can stay fit unfortunately he's got injured quite a bit yeah he's, he's always been injury prone hasn't it and now obviously he's getting older I would suspect to be even more injury prone speaking as a a man on the other side of 35 myself, and I don't even do any sports. Um, so <laughs> I, I can imagine that he gets uh, injured quite a lot. Uh, Mark McGuinness as well, he's an interesting one, because wasn't he out on loan last season, but he's come back now, um, uh, but Luton are interested in him. I, he played last night, uh, according to the, a BBC article I read earlier. What's the situation with him? Are, are you keeping him? Do you think Luton, you'll be able to to fight off Luton? What's the situation? To be honest, it's, it's one of those, like, I really like him. I think he's such a good player. Um, you know, again, he's not he's another one of those like natural leaders. And when he was first yeah. kind of breaking into the team, um, after we signed him, I thought he has everything it takes to be a Cardiff captain one day. But I don't know, is it whether he's just fallen out of favour a bit, I'm not too sure. But he's one of those players we can get quite a decent wad of money for, and you know, we don't have that many, and it's in a position where maybe we can afford to let a player go like we got Gutas, we got um Chambers, we got some youngsters who can play centre half as well and look really promising. Um and if we can get, you know, eight, nine million pounds for him, then you know, that's something we don't really do much. Um it's a type of fee we don't get that often for players, you know. Um yeah. So it's one of those ones I would be sad to see him go. But I kind of understand it. You know, you can't really, especially in, uh, for a club like Cardiff, we can't really turn down uh, fees like that for for a player. Yeah, especially if they're out of favour, because I did see that he didn't play against Sunderland as well, which I presumed was just, I, I just guessed it was something to do with the speculation linking him to Luton, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't understand that he'd fallen out of favour. Uh, one more thing uh, when it comes to the Cardiff squad, any injuries or suspensions? I know it's early in the season, so if there is a suspension, then something's gone seriously wrong. But I did see, <laughs> did Sunderland score a penalty at the weekend? Uh, no, it was from a, a free kick. Was it a free kick? I just saw the yeah. shot, right, yeah. Um, but any injuries or suspensions that we need to be aware of? Uh, David Turnbull got injured in the warm-up last night, uh, midfielder, where he meant that he was supposed yeah. to start, um, which I would have liked to have seen, because I think he needs a run of games just to get his confidence up a little bit. Um, and Bristol Rovers would have been perfect for that, but he got injured in the warm-up, so it meant Eli King came in. And I hate to say it, maybe that's a blessing in disguise, because, um, again, it's another youngster in the midfield, so we might see... King on the bench. Um, he did really well at Ross County uh, last season on loan. Um, I think he got man of the match against Rangers or something, which is, you know, quite a statement. Um, so, you know, if we can see him involved uh, in the squad a little bit more, uh, then that would be really cool. But um, again, it's at the it's at the expense of a player who I quite like and want it to go well for him. Uh, so yeah. You know, it's a bit bittersweet in that sense. Yeah, fair enough. Actually, I've just realised I do one more question I do want to ask you. Uh, you mentioned Nat Phillips was on loan last season. Now, Dara O'Shea, uh, currently a Burnley player, heavily moving a link away to Brentford, uh, heavily linked with a move away to Brentford. Um, if we can double our money for him, 
I think I think the board will, will sell him. I think we signed him for seven million. I think if Brentford come in and offer 14, 15, then, then I think he goes. Um, however, the club have just put some videos and quotes up about him saying how much he likes Scott Parker. So that's an interesting one. So we'll have to see what happens with that one. Um, but Nat Phillips has been quietly mentioned in the press a little bit, being linked to Burnley. Joe Worrell as well is another one. But obviously Nat Phillips is one that was on loan at Cardiff last season. Do you think he'd be a, a good addition for a, a club trying to get back to the Premier League? Oh, definitely, hundred um, percent. I think he'd be a he'd be a great signing for pretty much anyone in the championship. I think he starts for probably most championship teams as well. Um, mm. And yeah, I think you know it would be a it'd be a really really good signing for Burnley if um, you guys managed to pull it off. Um, even yeah, I I think he'd do really well there. Yeah, we seem to be linked with him all the time, though. I don't know if it's just another lazy link or what. As far as I'm aware, the Joe Warrell link is more there's more truth in that one but again uh we'll see uh, sticking with Burnley though obviously new manager good start to the season a statement win up at down at Luton should I say um what are your thoughts on on, on this I mean you guess I guess you won't know too much about the current Burnley side because we don't at the minute we've only seen them play once under this new manager and some of the new players but what are your thoughts on this on this current Burnley side mate I think it's you know it's one that I think will probably go up this year um I think you guys in Leeds are going to be the two going for the title this season. Um, you know, there's good teams in the championship this year, mm. but I think the both of you guys are just like a cut above the rest. And if the game against Luton's anything to go by, then, you know, I think a lot of teams are going to struggle uh, against you guys this year. Um, and there's, you know, the Scott Parker effect as well. Um, every time he's been in this division, he ends up getting teams promoted. Um, you know, it's, I think it, it was it was always going to be tough uh, to replace company, um, mm. but at this level, um, Scott Parker's proven it before, and I, I think that could be a pretty a pretty sound appointment. Um, he divides opinion a bit. Um, yeah, well, that's it. That, I, I were going to specifically single out Parker, to be honest with you, but you've done it. You've done it anyway. Like, there's a lot of self-proclaimed EFL experts and some of the people that they use on Sky saying Scott Parker though I, I think I think that could be a reason why they don't go up and I, and even though I'll be honest with you I was a little bit underwhelmed with the appointment I've soon come round to it uh, I feel like I've fallen for his cockney charm if I'm honest with you mate because even after this first interview I was like yes this guy knows what he's on about I'm like hold on he's been media trained since 14 so I've just fallen for it but you see all these people saying ah Scott Parker might be the reason why they won't go up I, I don't understand that he's got two teams up already yes he laboured to get Fulham up but still he, he got them up and that, and that was the aim what are your thoughts on the appointment then you said it's a sound sound appointment so I guess I've already got it but just expand on that like, why, why do you think it's a sound appointment when I've got all these experts telling me that it's it's not a good appointment to be honest I think you know the aim for Burnley this year in the ideal order is just to go straight back up um, and I honestly think Parker can be the man to do that he's managed to do it with probably worse squads um and you know this Burnley team so far you've got big names in it you've got decent players uh, you add in the Scott Parker effect um you know like you said he has that bit of cockney charm he he kind of just says stuff and you believe it and again yeah. like you know maybe it's the media training whatever I'm not too sure but it's just whenever I see a Scott Parker interview I I just think like oh yeah I I 100% believe that um yeah like, I I just fall for it every time I don't know why but yeah, he's like, at this level, I think he's such a good coach. All right, his Premier League record isn't the greatest. Um, but, you know, he's, I, I don't know, I just have this feeling that uh, like, I think he's a good coach anyway. Um, he yeah. can definitely get the players playing for him. I don't think that'll be much of a problem. And, you know, experience is absolutely crucial, especially if you're going to do a promotion push. And he's done it twice. You know, you can't get better than that really 100% of the time he's been in the division he's taken teams up you know and yeah. I think this Burnley side is more than good enough to do that again and he can keep his kind of record intact you know so um yeah I think it's pretty much a all right a bit underwhelming uh maybe at the start but if you look at kind of the bigger picture um I think it, it was pretty spot on to be honest 
Yeah, fair enough. Fingers crossed you are right on that, but from what I've seen so far, we was very good down at Luton the other day. That's one of the games that's supposed to be one of the hardest games this season for us. We do have a tough start, though. Obviously, we've got yourselves coming up next. Then we've got Sunderland underway. Then it's Blackburn, which, yes, aren't the best in the world, but it's it's a derby early on. I think you've got Swansea quite early on as well, haven't you? So I think that derby's quite early on as well. So that's interesting that they put the two... Well, two of the three biggest in this league, um, the derbies at, at, at early on. They may have done the same with the Steel City, I'm not sure. Um, and then after that, we've got Leeds. Um, so if we've come out of that with, you know, 10 points, I'd, I'd be happy with that. But, we, you know, we, we've got three already. Fingers crossed on this side. <laughs> we can get three again at the weekend. Uh, and then we'll see uh, what happens up at Sunderland. Um, predictions then, mate? Have you got any predictions for the weekend? What do you think the score's going to be? And be honest, if you think Cardiff can nick a nil one and and sit back and hit us on the counter, then then feel free to say it. I think it's going to be really tough. Um, it's, you know, probably one of the three hardest games of the season for anyone, along with Luton, like you said, and probably Leeds at Ellen Road as well. Um, but I'm fully going with the heart and not the head on this one. And my, my head's saying that it's going to be a long afternoon. Um, but the other part of me is thinking, you know, if... If we can get a any kind of result um, out of this, then that sets us in a good position before uh, the Swansea game uh, the weekend after. So I'm going to go with a one-all draw, um, and I'll be absolutely buzzing if that's the case. Yeah, to be fair, mate, you might not be far off. I, 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 I am not looking forward to this one. I don't think it's going to be as easy as Luton. I think, yes, we made a statement win and that will breed confidence and then we can kick on, hopefully. But I think also it's made a lot of the other teams sit up and like, oh, Burnley are going to be dangerous this year. And then your manager and your management team will have looked at that and thought, right, let's not leave gaps at the back like Luton did. So we're going to have to find another way to win. But that was the beauty of Burnley, the championship last time. We always found a way to win. Can we do it this time under a different manager? We'll have to see. It's going to be a different type of challenge to what it was against Luton, but I think we can overcome it. I think it might be tough, nil-nil at half-time, something like that. Uh, and then hopefully we just turn the screw in the second half. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Burnley win. But you'll be happy to know that the last time we are in the Championship, we started well with a win at Huddersfield and then we drew quite a lot of games and then we had like that slow start I don't know if you remember and then people were saying oh Burnley aren't going to be that good this year they might be looking to get in the top six and then we were all we could see that it was nearly there but not quite like we drew it home to Luton which in the end weren't a bad result because they ended up going up with us obviously um, drew it home to Stoke drew it home to Blackpool who got relegated we drew away to Blackpool as well Blackpool only one of three teams we didn't beat in the league that year um, so oh, is it one or two I can't remember Watford being the other one anyway um, but we might. My point is, we might have a slow start again after the big win. But I think with the win being so emphatic against Luton, then hopefully it just it just gives us a confidence that we can kick on and make it two out of two. Um, one more thing as well before we wrap it up: um, Is there any particular players, Burnley players, that you're a little bit worried about? Yeah, that um, I'm not quite sure how to say his name. Just from what I've seen, um, bits of the uh, Luton game, um. It was the lad who got it. Perez, is it? Or Perez? Perez, the... yeah. Well, he's brand new. You yeah. probably know about as much as him as we do. Yeah, just but he did look good. Yeah, he looks really decent. Like he got a couple of assists. Um, I thought he made some decent play. I looked at him and I thought, oh, you know what, he 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 could be a player this season in the championship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think your squad's so big. Like uh, yeah, it's too big. It's, though, it's isn't quite it? it's quite hard to single out just <laughs> one or two players. But I think him in particular, he he did impress me a lot um, against yeah. Limpton. It's interesting to say that because uh, Dar Roche got the man of the match on Sky. And I agree with that. I think I gave it to Dar Roche. But last night we did a full-time show um, here with me and the lads. And I think two of the lads gave it to Perez as well. But obviously he got the two assists and it looked like he slotted in really well. He doesn't even speak English yet, apparently. He's one of two Brazilians <laughs> we've got in the squad. And he's just come in and played that well straight away. So I can understand why people thought he played well. In fact, before I do wrap it up, obviously I can't ignore the fact that you're Welsh. I see the, the Welsh flag just in the background as well. Are we going to expect some banter on Saturday for the European Championship final? Please don't tell me that they're going to be bringing that Spanish crying flag again because I can't cope with that, mate. I'm still not over it. <laughs> um, I mean, it might be there. There might be some chance of it's coming home. Um, yeah. Which, you know, that can go for another at least two years now for the World Cup. Um, but, you know, when I first saw our flag at um, Bristol Rovers for 
what was a pre-season, pre-season friendly, I was like, one, that's hilarious, and two, yeah, that's that's probably going to go on a few uh, away yeah. trips this season. It was one of them. I saw it, and I'm like, for God's sake. And I'm also, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, we'll wrap it up there, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Obviously, second appearance on Turfcast. You're, you're a great guest, mate. And I'm sure we'll do it again later in the season when we play you down in Cardiff. But obviously, I'm hoping that we don't see you again after this season. I'm hoping when we go up, we stay up. <laughs> we don't embarrass ourselves again. Unless we see you because you come up with us as well or, or you come up the year after. But I uh, just want to let everyone know where they can find you and, and any of the content that you may or may not create. Yeah, so um, you can find me on Twitter at Thomas Taylor 4 that's Thomas without a H, and uh, in my bio there's a link to my blog called The Sport Addict Corner, where um, I talk a bit about football, but it's more kind of just a general uh, sports website. Um, one of my kind of resolutions for the second half of the year is to not neglect it as much as I have, um, and now that I've uh, come to the end of my degree, um, hopefully I have a bit more time to chuck some content up on there, um, so yeah um whatever kind of other sports you're into as well as rugby uh boxing mma um nfl anything like that um there'll be some stuff on there for you happy days well i'll be more make i'll make sure we check it out i'll i'll put some links to your twitter in the bio on youtube as well but thomas thank you very much for coming on the show it's been a pleasure good luck for the season but of course after saturday awesome thank you